Hey everybody, it's InnoVision, and what we have here is an original Xbox. This machine is 20 years old. We picked it up from a thrift store for 20 bucks. They told us it's not working, that it'll turn on, but sometimes it shuts off randomly, and it does not read discs. And so I figured in the absolute worst case scenario, we can use it to harvest parts out of it to rebuild another Xbox in the future, or in the ideal situation, we can completely rebuild and refurbish this device to restore it back to its former glory and make improvements along the way. So when I say make improvements along the way, I mean the ability for arbitrary code execution. That means that we can run our own modified version of software tools. So this will allow us to upgrade the hard drive, it'll allow us to run third-party apps like emulators, and it'll even allow us to boot game backups off of the drive. And so ideally we'd replace the hard drive with a solid state drive because this thing has an old spinning drive and those things are prone for failure. Now this will all be made possible by using this $10 Raspberry Pi RP2040 Pico microcontroller. And so the Xbox has a long rich history of console modding. And so typically you could rebuild the debug port to install a mod chip. But here instead of installing a traditional mod chip, we're going to be installing a Raspberry Pi based mod chip. And this is very cool, it has so many neat software features and we're gonna be covering it in the next series of videos here. So we've been working on an awesome three-part mini-series with a possible fourth bonus episode. In today's episode, our focus is on troubleshooting, rebuilding, and modding this console. So you may be asking yourself, you know, why go through all this trouble? Why mod the console? Well, the answer is actually quite simple. The Xbox is over 20 years old at this point. And without a working hard drive, which is a, a part that's known to fail, the device will not boot. And you can't just take an, any ordinary hard drive off the shelf and swap it in here and it boot up. That's because the hard drive is locked to the main board. So if you don't have that hard drive key and the hard drive hasn't been locked with that key, the console will not boot. And so it's very important that we use aftermarket modification here in order to be able to swap out the hard drive. Not to mention, you can actually tweak your BIOS or custom firmware to allow the Xbox to also boot without the DVD-ROM being present, which is another device that's known to fail quite frequently. And on top of all that, once we unlock the ability for arbitrary code execution, we will have the ability to run third-party applications like emulators, different operating systems. Another thing you can do with this mod is the ability to boot up game backups off of your hard drive or solid state drive in our case. And so this is important because the Xbox came out in a time period before game digital downloads existed. And I mean, the mod in and of itself is just cool. It's it's really nice to fix a device that's been broken rather than end up in a landfill somewhere and generating more pollution. So the first thing we're gonna do is actually troubleshoot the device to try to figure out what's wrong to see if we can fix it. And so, you know, given the very little information we got from the folks at the thrift store, I've kind of developed a hypothesis of some of the things that could be going wrong here. And so one possibility, given that the device shuts off randomly, could be maybe we have a faulty power supply. Now, if we have that issue, we're kind of stuck until we can get another Xbox to replace the power supply with. But another more common issue could be that the console is overheating or that the hard drive is failing or maybe a combination of both of those things. And so my hope is that it's either overheating or the hard drive failing or both of those things, because that's something we can work with here. All right, we're going to fire it up. It looks like the disc tray is jammed. We don't see anything on the screen yet. And it is very loud, like there's a lot of dust in there. Let's try again. All right, we've got liftoff. So definitely the disc reader is broken here. I'm going to see if I can get it to eject. Here we go. I've made a paper clip straight. And I'm going to push it in this hole here. See if I can get the disc tray to come out. Wow. It's taking quite a bit of force here. There we go. Came out. So it looks like it's getting stuck on the closing. Okay. 
but it turns on. Now let's see what version we have. Okay, look at that kernel version, that K. So this is likely a 1.6 or 1.6B Xbox, but we'll know for sure once we take it apart. So after troubleshooting the device, the conclusion I've come up with is actually the hard drive is failing. And so this is great. If we can mod the device, we can swap out the hard drive. Now I know there exists several methods for like hot swapping the drive and things like that. I'm not interested in those mods. You know, those are nice, but if the optical drive fails, you're kind of SOL if you want to swap the drive out. I want something a little bit more robust and more reliable. Um, after all, I'm probably going to have my kids playing with this, so I need something that's just going to work all the time. So now that we have a good idea of what might be going on here, what we need to do is actually disassemble and clean this thing from the inside out. There's 20 years of dust, ass, and funk build up here. And it's very important that everything's clean because we're going to be soldering components to the main board. And if we want the solder to take, everything needs to be spotless. So before we get started, I want to spend a few minutes just kind of cleaning this Xbox up. It's pretty dirty, dusty, grungy. So I'm just taking some isopropyl alcohol, 91%, and adding it to a paper towel. Dude. So I'm just taking a Q-tip soaked in isopropyl alcohol and just wiping out all the ports and ridges, just trying to get this bad boy cleaned up, at least from the exterior. All right, I'm seeing some improvements. So a couple remarks before we get started. This console is made in China and the manufacturing date is 2004, October. So this is likely a 1.6 or 1.6B. So I'm applying a generous amount of isopropyl alcohol around the feet here so we can remove them. Once you've let the alcohol kind of soak in, we're gonna use a plastic spudger tool to scrape the feet off. All right. So we got under there, we got one down, three to go. Well, the good news here is that it doesn't look like this console has been opened before. So I don't need to worry about somebody else having tried to open this up and modding it and it going wrong. Now as I remove the screws, I notice that some of them have the appearance of being stripped. And I don't think somebody opened the console before. It's possible that at the factory they got stripped during the installation process, or just over time the screws became oxidized and lose some of their um, structural integrity. Also, it's unfortunate I let a friend borrow my tools at the time of this video. All right, so what I did was I wrapped a piece of paper towel uh, around the tip of this Torx. There we go. Yeah, look at that. It definitely looks stripped. Alright, so now that it has... We should be able just to lift this straight up. So, this is the flip side. So, yeah, there's a little bit of dust in there. So we'll be able to clean it up. All right, so now we're gonna start disassembling the Xbox from the inside. So we're gonna take a Torx screwdriver here. There's one here, a screw here that we need to remove. And there's a screw here under the IDE cable. If my memory serves me correctly, I think there should be one more. Oh yeah, right here. So this will help us grab those screws from these hard to reach places. Seems like I'm grabbing clumps of dust each time I do this. Okay. And now we're going to disconnect the hard drive and the DVD. So I'm just pulling out the IDE cable first. And we're going to work on the power cable. You got to be careful with a device this old. You don't want to break anything. All right. So 
Now we're going to remove the hard drive power cable from the hard drive tray. And so here we go, it's removed. A little nice pile of dust there. And then now we can disconnect the DVD ROM along with, and then pull out the tray that it's attached to. Okay. And then now we need to disconnect the power cable. All right, so now the DVD is coming right out. I think that might be one of the ones with the better readers. I'd have to go back and look. Whoa, look at that. I never saw so much dust. All right, I'm gonna have to grab a vacuum for this. No exaggeration, it seriously took like 10 or 15 minutes to rid this console of the dust. Alright, so I'm just going through and unscrewing the screws that are used to secure the motherboard into the chassis. It's important to get this console as clean as possible because we're going to be soldering a pin header into the main board. And in order to make a good connection, we're going to need everything to be clean and dust free. So as I'm removing things, I'm also cleaning things simultaneously. We're going to get more paper towels with isopropyl alcohol and continue cleaning this. Now if everything works out with this, this will be a Christmas present for my kids. So I continue by gently dabbing a paper towel that's been soaked in 91% isopropyl alcohol to remove all the dust and try to restore the board back to its former glory. I even take a q-tip with some alcohol to those hard to reach places. Now we go on to remove the CPU and GPU's heat sinks. The CPU heat sink is quite easy to remove. The GPU's heat sink on the other hand is quite difficult to remove and requires force to remove it. But you need to do so carefully so that you don't crack the plastic where the heat sink's retaining clip locks into. After I removed the heat sinks, I vacuumed up all the particulate matter and used isopropyl alcohol to clean the surface. Now look at that. That is shiny. Now we go on to, well you guessed it, apply more isopropyl alcohol to the heat sinks to loosen up all that funk and clean them up. There was seriously some dust bunnies in there so big we probably should have named them. But all right, now that we've cleaned it up, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is install this LPC port pin header. And this is important because by having a pin header, we can actually swap out what type of mod chip or device that we wanna use for booting alternate BIOS off of. You could technically just solder your Raspberry Pi directly to the LPC port using wires, but by using a pin header, we keep this configurable and dynamic and we are able to change out what device we're connected to. And so I think that's just a lot cleaner design. So I think this is totally cool. The fact that we're gonna use a Raspberry Pi microcontroller to simulate a BIOS. So the Raspberry Pi has its own, you know, two megs of persistent memory. And so that's where the program or instructions, the BIOS will be stored. And so we're using the Raspberry Pi's general input output ports to interface to the LPC port on the Xbox. And so the mod we're using is something called Mod Show, and we're gonna provide links in the description to their GitHub page. And what's really uh, cool here is they've actually taken the time to put together a wiring diagram, uh, upload a BIOS that you can you know flash to this device. And so it's just really cool, this is amazing. This is just a testament to what a time to be alive. There's so many cool little microcontrollers and electronics projects that we have access to. So using a pair of needle nose pliers, we removed one of the pins here. And now we're gonna insert the pin header into the LPC port, just like this. And then we're gonna grab a piece of tape to tape it down so it won't move when we flip the board back over. Normally you wanna use a more heat resistant tape, but this is what I have right now, so I'm just gonna roll with it. So the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is actually flip the Xbox over once we've secured the pin header with tape. We're gonna add some flux on top of the pin headers that are coming in from underneath the board. And I'm heating my soldering iron to about 380 degrees centigrade. Apply a generous amount of flux. Now we begin soldering down each of the pins in the pin header. If you make a mistake, don't panic. We can just desolder it off and try again. It 
Looking good. Next, we apply more flux and begin soldering down D0 to ground. And for this, we're just piggybacking on the ground that exists in the screw hole on the main board here. To make life easier here, I tend to use a little bit more wire than I'm actually going to need, and I can always clip the excess off but it's easier to start with a longer piece of wire than one that's too short and I can always kind of gauge the length by stretching it out and then clipping off the excess and now we can solder it down to ground and then we gently dab off the excess flux now we begin soldering our line for LPC address data 0 or LAD 0 again we're cutting off excess wire here and I found it a little bit easier to handle this line using some tweezers because there's kind of a cramped amount of space in here. A little flux never hurt nobody. And now we solder our line for LAD1 or LPC address data 1. Now we go ahead and align the wire to the LPC pin and we remove any excess wire and then solder it down. Again, I'm finding the tweezers make it easier to handle this tight space here. Next, we connect our LPC pin header to 3.3 volts, and this step's only required for the Xbox 1.6 and 1.6B. And now we make our connection with LPC address data 3. Again, clipping off the excess wire, sizing it just right, and then soldering it down to our pin header. Now the connection to LAD3 was the most challenging one because of how short it was. Unfortunately, we had an issue with our camera and didn't capture the next two steps. But what we had to do here was create a wire to connect L-frame to our LPC debug pin header. And this is something that's only needed for the 1.6 and 1.C Xboxes again. Finally, we had to sever the connection to the BIOS chip to the CPU to make it no longer bootable. This would force the Xbox to boot off of LPC. And this is something that likely is going to be corrected in software updates. But at the time that I did this mod, that feature wasn't implemented in software yet. Now that we've completed the mod, Here's an example of what it looks like when you boot into the custom firmware. This is so cool. The Xbox actually can run a server that you can log into to flash new BIOS onto the chip. So in the next episode, we're going to cover how to flash the Raspberry Pi, and we're going to work on trying to rebuild the optical drive so to see if we can get it to read discs again. Don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button so you can not only see the next episode, but you can see all the gaming tips, mods, and collectibles we've got coming down the pipeline.